Hello, everyone. It's been brought to my attention that there are plenty of videos on this site about all sorts of very fancy RSI platforms, but that we don't really talk much about Zoom. So let's do that. Let's talk about the basics of Zoom and what you need to work effectively on that particular platform. The first question, of course, is, well, what do I need? What do I need to work effectively on Zoom? The first thing, of course, is that we need a computer, whether it's an all-in-one or a tower or a laptop. What won't work for us is something more basic. So we do need a full computer, not a tablet, unfortunately, not a Chromebook, because Zoom, the app, doesn't work on the Chromebook, and we need the app or the client, not just the browser, to be able to interpret. We do need a fairly powerful device. So usually in the Windows world, the equivalent of an Intel i5 with at least four gigabytes of RAM. The recommendation for the more powerful platforms is even higher, usually an i7 with at least 16 giga of RAM. So if you get a little bit more power, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We do also need a headset with a boom mic on it. Now, why do we need this? We need it to be USB. We need it to cover both ears because in the simultaneous world, we definitely want that. And we want to invest in something that will be comfortable. We're going to be wearing it for protracted periods of time. And we want to have high quality sound, both incoming and outgoing. We want to make sure that that microphone has what's called noise canceling, the microphone, not the ear set, not the, not the headset itself, but it should say noise canceling microphone on it. We want a stable internet connection, and we want that to be wired via ethernet not just Wi-Fi. Because of the way that Wi-Fi works, it's just not stable enough for us as interpreters. All the participants will be on Wi-Fi, or pretty much all of them, but the interpreter cannot be. We have to be connected. Now, if you don't have a port for one of these cables on the back of your computer, your standalone, or your laptop, then you may need an adapter such as the one that we see on screen. They're USB adapters. They're fairly easy to obtain. So we need that, and we need a certain speed that is going to be at least um, upload and a download speed of 10 megabits per second. That's sort of the basic. Some platforms say a little bit less. You'll see a few things on the internet that will say five, but the truth be told, you really need much faster connection at least 10. And lastly, we need a quiet space. This just isn't going to cut it, unfortunately. It should be a quiet space that has plenty of uh, opportunities for noise to be absorbed. A messy office is the perfect interpreter's office. Lots of things to absorb sound, not too much in the way of flat surfaces, and small is actually better than large. You don't want your sound bouncing off the walls. Now, of course, how do we do it? First things first, you need to download the Zoom client. As I mentioned a moment ago, you can't do this over the browser in Chrome or any other, uh, in the, in the other browser. You have to have the client installed. Next thing, you'll look for an email from your client, something similar to this. It will contain a link. All you need to do once you've got your equipment in place and you're set up in that space is to click on that link and get ready to go. So just how does it work? Stay tuned. I'll show you exactly how it works in just a moment. We've clicked on the link that our client has sent to us and we are here in the meeting waiting for it to start. Down on the bottom, we have our regular Zoom control panel. Nothing special to write home about there until the host turns on the interpreting function. Once that happens, 
we will see a pop-up screen. You have been assigned as an interpreter, and here's my language pair. I'll click OK. Once I do that, you can see that my toggle options have appeared, Spanish and English. So once the meeting starts, I will be able to toggle back and forth between the English and the Spanish channels as need be. So one good practice is to change your name when you first join the meeting. There we go. And if you notice, you can see that I am on the Spanish channel. Just under my name, it says ES. If I switch to the English channel, you'll see that it switches to EN. This is a great way to keep track of which channel you're on and which channel your colleague is on if your team interpreting. You can just move that over to a little corner of your screen and keep it open so that you can track what's going on. And that's really all there is to it. I toggle back and forth depending on the language my client needs me to be working into at the time. If they're speaking English, I'm going into Spanish. If they're speaking Spanish, I'm going into English. And it's as simple as that. Of course, there are plenty of ways to tweak your system and make it much more sophisticated. But what we have described here is all you need to get started. Happy interpreting.